Um, so can you use the uh, your experiences of having done this case, having um, been registered in this case, to think about uh, the role of an academic in terms of theory and practice, in terms of what goes on inside the university and how that has influenced your work outside with tribal rights and uh, ownership of natural resources and things like that, and how your work outside has influenced um, discussions I think I learned a lot from the case in terms of just finding out how the law works uh, and not just in terms of how the law works as in the content of the case but things like giving the sti or you know uh, all the kind of um, little tweaky bits of the law which are about the practice of filing which I found quite interesting. Uh, but in terms of what, uh, how this relates to the university and the legal work, well, one is that the legal work, I mean, the case came entirely out of my academic uh, background because my PhD was on Bastar and I've been visiting it for several years. So it's only because I had that connect to the place that I wanted to file the case. And uh, I, you know, it's, there's a clear connection there. Uh, in terms of what I learned from the case and how that feeds back, I teach a course on the sociology of law, uh, an MA course. Um, and I think it sort of helps me with examples. It helps me with, uh, you know, just a way of making the subject a bit more interesting at particular moments, although a lot of what we teach is quite theoretical. Uh, it also, in a sense, because one of the things that we teach is uh, the rule, one of the things that I like to teach is the rule of law. And in a sense, that's something on which there is so much debate about how you describe it, how you uh, see it, whether it's seen as something that is an unmitigated good, you know, the E.P. Thompson idea that uh, regardless of the fact that law is hegemonic, that it's an instrument of the ruling classes. There is something about the rule of law which is an unmitigated good. And at some level, um, one has to agree with that, that in the sense that when nothing else is there, at least the law is there to rest, you know, keep some semblance of uh, democracy alive. But on the other hand, when you look at how the law actually works in practice, um, it's really debatable about uh, as to whether there is anything like the rule of law and then there is a lot of other literature on how the rule of law is just a kind of hegemonic idea to uh, make people think that the state is working when it's not working really. So I think it's, I mean I don't teach my case but it informs what I teach. Um, is there a level of involvement for example that your current students have in your work outside the university? How do you uh, negotiate things? Uh, for a long time, I never actually talked about the case in the department. I mean, it's only in the last year or two, in fact, when I've not been so involved in the case that I've, I've taught about it in class as well. I've just sort of described it. But otherwise, uh, you know, I think there has to be that separation. Yeah, I mean, I think not because of the law case, I mean, not in terms of the Salvajudum litigation, but I think that really the university has to open up a lot more to uh, things that are happening outside. Uh, you know, we really need to have a lot more people from different walks of life come and talk to students and uh, use their material in our curricula. And if you think of the way that the university system in India is designed, it destroys a lot of indigenous knowledge that people might have had. So if you think of sort of agricultural knowledge, right, if like you have 70,000 rice varieties in Chhattisgarh. There are 400,000 plant formulations in all the different systems of medicine, Yunani and Ayurveda, etc. But what gets taught in college, in an agricultural college, etc. would be just a sort of minor portion of this. And then as people feel that they get educated, they sort of lose that connect with other kinds of skills that could have been developed. So there's a huge kind of mismatch between formal education and the kind of skills that there are in the country. And formal education is, in a sense, destroying that resource base. Or it's 
happening or developing outside of formal education. So there are serious problems in what we're teaching and how we're teaching it.